we talked last night in days of difficulty that the concept of the Dajjal and the difficulties that would open upon the earth and how faith would be taken. And Sayyidina Muhammad described that carrying one's deen in the last days would be like holding a hot coal, that means a burning fire, also symbolic of the fire that is within the heart, this fire of yearning and ishq and muhabbat. And the deen of Islam is comprised of Islam, the acceptance and filling your five pillars, the station of faith and the principles of faith, the six principles of faith and maqam al-ihsan is uh, all worshipness as if we see Allah and to know that if we're not seeing Allah or we see Allah Allah is always seeing us. So that's one, six, five and that's the numeric value of La ilaha illallah that when we enter into these oceans of reality it's not a coincidence that there's the five pillars, six principles and the oneness of maqam al-ihsan. This reality of acceptance of Islam is why the world is moving fastest to accepting Islam. So the difficulty that Prophet is describing for the people of Iman that for people to truly understand Iman is a station in which to love Sayyidina Muhammad more than we love ourselves. And by loving and becoming Muhammadiyoon that to, to love that reality, to respect the reality, to uphold the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's what makes the power of and the reality of the sunnah is that when people are trying their best to adhere to the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad it has an immense reality and pride for the believer that whatever Prophet brought for us we are trying to be the best of examples of that reality to uphold it, to use it, to revive it and that to be worthy of its true reality that all the Prophets of Allah wanted from that tabarak, wanted from that reality, wanted from all the might and the majesty that Allah has put within the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad With that the tariqah comes and teaches. That's why that uh, the people who have read about tariqah or they may be strong in philosophy and they philosophize about that we should only talk to Allah, we should only ask from Allah, all of these and they, they read even books of awliya and they come back and they say, we only ask of Allah, say, anna al-haq, anna al-haq because these are states. And the turuq is coming to teach us how to correctly reach to that state. And if you don't go through, we said like a, a pin code, if you don't go through all the teachings you're going to be missing the pin that opens that reality. What shaitan thought of only dealing with Allah but he was not in any fana, he was in the fana of himself and in the worshipness and pride of himself and what he thought he had accomplished which set him very far from the reality that Allah is bestowing. The turuqs come and teach especially for the last days that we have stages. We have that when we understood that my love for Allah is that I have to love Sayyidina Muhammad and I have to be lost in that love, be, be completely engulfed like the moth that burns into the fire of ishq with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And how to do that is by keeping the company of the Ulul Amr, Fa Allah's command, 
wa ati rasul obey Sayyidina Muhammad and all the messengers fa ulul amri minkum and obey and keep the company of the ulul amr the ones whom amr that they carry the alif because they are dressed from Allah's might and majesty. They carry the Muhammadan reality because they, they followed in this path and in this formula that we're going to outline. As a result Allah gave them to be Rabbaniyoon where Allah's only title in Holy Qur'an is be Rabbaniyoon that you learn the book and you taught the book. That itself is a code. What is the book of Allah It's not printed paper, in the heavens there's no printing press. Kitabullah, ayatul Qur'an wal kitab al mubin only Allah described for us, this is Sayyidina Muhammad that they learned the Kitabullah, that they learned what Prophet wanted to convey to them, to teach them of their khuluq, their character, of, of the, the kindness and the love and the muhabbat. And Allah began to pour into their hearts of knowledges and teachings and realities. As a result they began to teach the kitab, teach of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad so the Qur'an is encoded, people are reading and think they're understanding but yet you know above every knower, Ya ayyuhalladzina amanu amanu, O you who believe, believe even more and above every knower there's a higher knower, higher knowledge, higher reality that Allah's oceans of realities they never end. So those whom are now authorized to teach about the Muhammadan reality then they become Rabbaniyoon. And then these are the ulul amr that they carry the alif, meem and a result of the ra they are now conveying these realities. So when we come across the ulul amr the tariqah comes and teaches us these three categories that we have to reach to a station of muhabbat. We have to come with love, the whole way is based on love. We have to have love of Allah love of Sayyidina Muhammad and as a result if this love is true, this character is true, we have to be loving to the ulul amr and loving even to the hand that crushes you because nature teaches that. Nature teaches if you want the beauty of the rose you have to crush it for its oil and its fragrance to become exposed. Means through testing and difficulty your true reality and beauty will be exposed. As soon as the shaykhs and their students become tested, many, many of them they're not like a rose, they're like a cactus. They're very difficult, very aggressive, very angry and very vengeful. Anyone whom immediately fights a teacher fights what they've been taught is a munafiq because the station of love and muhabbat you don't go from love and hate. Somebody who's extremely in love will be even abused in their love, they'll tolerate every difficulty because of that love and that is a sincere lover of Divine realities. The one whom his love is like a flower on a rock that as soon as he becomes angry he begin to curse the turuqs, to curse the way, begin to post articles against everything. That's a munafiq, that's not somebody who reached to the realities that we're describing and that in its own reality Allah wants to show, look you didn't reach to love. Love is like you love your child, the child you have cannot do anything wrong even all day long the child says, I hate you. The parents never say, I hate you back. With all their love they take care of them, they change their diaper, they wash them. If they're in difficulty they, they give them whatever they can do to relieve them of difficulty. And Prophet was describing, this is a drop from the drop of the love of Allah Anyone who feels this love and compassion, Allah gave it to them to understand His Divinely love. 
when we come we have to have muhabbat for the ulul am. We have to have love for the shaykh, the teaching, this opens an ihtiram and a respect. So it means this way to reach its first door was muhabbat. As soon as we came into the ocean of love you'll be tested. If you don't get your package on time you start emailing angry, angry, angry. All of these are ways of testing. Every interaction Allah is giving to you to deal with the shaykhs is to see and to give a, a, a movement in your character and your action. Why you become angry? Why you become so fierce? Why you have no patience? All of these characteristics that you exhibit are exactly what Allah wants you to see. That this love that you think you have for, for Allah is completely fake. This love that you think you have for Prophet is even faker because you didn't get to any of this. It's much easier than to practice on these ulul am. Interact with them, deal with them, deal in the whole situation and mechanism that they set up so that to bring people in and begin to mush them around. As a result this first stage of muhabbat is that I'm coming, I'm sincere, Ya Rabbi I want to be of service, I want to be around them, I want to learn this understanding, I want to love you. And this is all going to be leading to how these awliyaullah they talked only of Allah Don't take the writing at their highest stations and then say, yes see this is only what you have to be. No, you have to take how they achieve that reality so that we can achieve that reality inshaAllah one day. If not here then in the grave. So they entered into muhabbat and love and they understood that love, you know the skin it's a fragile. But as soon as you cut the skin what grows back of scar tissue is a much more stronger bond. So it means that the heart is going to be continuously in difficulty, continuously in testing and feels like it's ripping and tearing but as a result the scar tissue that comes back makes that love to be very strong. That we've been tested, we've been tried 20, 30, 35 years, 25 years, 10 years, 15 years of continuous testing, continuous testing and trying our best to keep this ocean of muhabbat. Then they begin to teach us these awliyaullah that come now into the hudur. That if you understood muhabbat make and, and take yourself to be nothing. So how you can achieve hudur if you don't sit and do any meditation? And if you don't do tafakkur and contemplation you stop and slow down I said that I entered into this love and I'm nothing and I meditate and I see the face of the shaykh, I see the association of the shaykhs and I say, I'm nothing. Dress me, dress me from your presence, let me to always be in your presence. And they build a relationship in which they see themselves always in the presence of the shaykh. They try five minutes a day, six minutes a day, seven minutes a day, ten minutes a day until their hudur becomes stronger, they feel the hudur means the presence, they feel the presence of the shaykh. They're conscious of the shaykh, they have the pictures of the shaykhs around. It's not worshipness, uh, his worshipness is only for Allah this is Allah's order. وَكُنُ ma sadiqin. Keep the company of my pious servants. Not physically, Allah is not restricted to a physical dimension. But at all times in our life Allah's command is for malakut first, the world of light and then for the mulk. So Allah is, is saying, keep the company of these pious servants from the world of light that visualize yourself in that world of light and make sure that they're always with you, that your heart is with them, you're trying to be of service to them and you took a path in which to connect your heart. This is the, the Jedi reality, this is the Madal reality, this is all the teachings that they're conveying. That when we sit and make our tafakkur and contemplating that we have to feel ourselves in their companionship. And that our tariqah is based on the association and the companionship, not the companionship of five amigos that sit around in a circle. It's the companionship of the shaykhs that we are seeing ourselves in their association that we our hearts are in their association and that we're asking to always be under their nazar. 
And when we're under their nazar they begin to dress us with the fires, dress us with the emanation. We said before, how are you going to get the nazar? It was simple, be of service, give, contribute, donate, get the attention. Everyone knows how, mashaAllah, they, they ripped us off in dunya. They tried to get us to have the nazar of the Prime Minister and they came to our association and they raised thousands of dollars from our people. That was a big rip off because that nazar had no value. It came and went, they took our money and, and we got no nazar. But everybody knows the nazar of dunya, you contribute, you give, you be of service, why? So the one whom you want their attention is now coming to you. You want the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad then be known for Mawlid and Nabi be known for the, the majlis of salawats, the majlis of love, the, the spreading of the dawah and tahzim and Nabi, spread the, the good word, spread the best example, spread the, the greatness of the reality of the character of Sayyidina Muhammad you're not going to get his attention so nazar everyone knows, you want the attention, do the actions that will get the attention. Then you're trained on how to keep their hudu, keep their presence, their physical nazar always with you and every day just a little bit of time, meditate, meditate that I'm nothing, I'm with you, I'm with you and that I know that you're seeing me but I can't see you. And that's not important but I know that you're with me, let me just to feel the fires, let me just to feel the energy, let me to feel the nazar that is dressing upon me. That muhabbat and the khudur becomes very strong. When the two are becoming stronger and stronger that your character is matching the shaykh's teachings, the tariqah teachings. Instead of being like this, it starts to come like this. They keep testing, you're patient, you're polite, everything about you is, is correct no matter how much being squeezed. As a result, this love and this presence becomes an ocean of fana. So fana and the shaykh is that when you're lost in the reality of the shaykh that you have died, your, your want died, your desire died, your independent character has died through all the testing, all the hammering, all the pounding until people look at you and they see your shaykh through you and they see it through your character, your example and your knowledges. They look and say the knowledges this person has is not from them but it must be from his shaykh that his shaykh deposited into his heart all his realities, deposited into his, into his being, his character, his example, all of those realities until that one reaches to be in the fana of the shaykh. Where then you deal with that one, it's really not him anymore. And that's what's important in this stage that people don't understand tariqah, that that one died a long time ago and what came out of seclusions, came out of all trainings, came all out of everything was his shaykh. His shaykh multiplied and grafted himself onto that shaykh, onto that person until he became the fana and the representative of the reality of his shaykh. Then his shaykh took because he has to give him from the perfected protocol, the perfected reality, the perfected teachings because they can't send it any higher without that understanding. Then that journey was only the beginning, that wasn't the end, this was merely the beginning. The Naqshbandiya, the, the murid of Naqshbandiya has to be a murshid. Everyone else is muhibeen, our lovers. But Naqshbandiya, its murids are all murshids, they have to have accomplished the state of the fana in their shaykh in which they had their muhabbat and loved and they served with their love, with their life, with their entire being. They give all their possessions away, they everything away for this love and they entered into that hudur. And as a result of their muhabbat and their hudur, they entered into the oceans of fanha where the shaykh exists through them and their character and their reality and personality died a long time ago. As a result then they take them to the next stage. 
which is the immensity of the love and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad At that time the shaykh begins to teach how to have the muhabbat and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad If we understand then he's teaching love, love, love of Sayyidina Muhammad, love of Sayyidina Muhammad until he has so much love and so much presence from the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad he becomes fana and lost into the reality of the Muhammadan reality. And what now comes out when you become lost in something, what now manifest is that which you loved is now manifesting. That becomes the whole hadith when they're lost in the love of Sayyidina Muhammad then what is manifesting is Muhammadun Rasulullah lights and realities and tajallis. That becomes the manifestation of the Hadith al-Qudsi that you did your fard and now you came with voluntary worship. All of what we're talking about is voluntary, nobody's commanded to do these things. You did your Islam. You did what Allah asked of you to the best of your ability, of your fard, of mandatory obligations. And this that you're doing is only from love. As a result of that, Prophet is now describing, I become your hearing, I become your seeing, I become your breath in which you breathe, I become the tongue in which you talk. I become the hands in which you touch, inna ladina yubayyun Allah or who took the hand, they took the hand of Allah upon the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad upon the hand of Ulul Am, Allah's hand upon all of them. That I become the hands in which you, you touch and I become the feet in which you move and your qadam and your movement. Means then that one is in the fana of Sayyidina Muhammad As a result of that fana of Sayyidina Muhammad they begin to propagate that love, propagate that reality, propagate that eminence. And only through that door Prophet begins now to make that one from the arifin. Because the arif and the one who knows he only can achieve knowing through the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad He's not in an orbit outside, out. His only orbit and his only mirage is into the reality and the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad As a result of being fana they lost themselves and what begins to appear is the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah Only through that fana that muhabbat of Allah, Allah Prophet takes that servant now to have immense love for Allah Immense love, they see the immensity that Allah has for Muhammadun Rasulullah, not for me and you. We negated outside, we said we're nothing. We entered into Muhammadun Rasulullah and they began as the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah they saw the immensity of muhabbat and love that Allah has for Sayyidina Muhammad As a result they entered into that love of ishq and they went into the oceans of fana which can't be described by words, they can't describe what types of lights and blessings and dressings that Allah begin to dress from His names and His attributes, dress from His lights and His blessings, His angels, all the lights that Allah and realities that Allah is bestowing upon Sayyidina Muhammad they achieve it in the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah So we're out, we have to come in to the Ulul Am. The Ulul Am take us in to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad is already inside the reality of Allah And this is the ocean of tawheed, real tawheed, you can't be outside of that. What they're trying to achieve is not outside of that. All of what's outside of that is in illusion and imagination. And only 
reality to achieve is within that reality. And that's why when these awliyaullah achieve the state of the fana and lost in Muhammadun Rasulullah what did they say, an al-haq, an al-haq, an al-haq. Not that he was a haq outside of it but he realized what Allah's dressing Prophet with. What Allah is dressing the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and his light like a little molecule inside of the heart of Prophet witnessing that reality but his physicality began to speak, an al-haq. Oh, I was the hand that saved all the, the expressions of these awliyaullah is not that they went to Allah independent but they achieved these magnificent and immense realities of closeness and proximity by the state of their fana and annihilation in the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah And the easiest way to understand is the ocean of mulk and physicality. This ocean of physicality by its nature is meant to separate us. You're one, 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 we're four or five people. And nothing in the ocean of mulk and that keeps itself separate could ever attain any of these realities. It's impossible for these individual units from the world of mulk to achieve anything of Allah's proximity. The fact that they want to talk only about Allah that everything is only Allah they are so far off from that understanding it's unimaginable. This ocean of haqqaiqs is the reality of the first usul that La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah ocean of singularity. This kalimat al-tawheed means oneness and when you try to reach Allah from mulk it's not one because you're one trying to reach one so it's actually two and that's not tawheed. Real tawheed is when you don't exist. When you took your mulk, you took your existence, you took your, your identity of being separate and you crushed it to be nothing and you entered into the world of light where the world of light we said many times one drop and one drop and one drop is one drop. If 10 million drops start to approach into the ocean of Muhammad Rasulullah they enter back into the ocean, what happens? It's the ocean of one Muhammadun Rasulullah They lost themselves, they gave back their identity, they gave back what separates them from everything. As a result Allah gave them everything. They became one in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah and they are swimming in that ocean and trying to reach higher darajats of what Prophet will bestow onto their lights of realities, of knowledges, of fires and touch and, and dressings. That's why Allah said, this is a school of adab, be careful. These drops of Muhammadun Rasulullah they have an immensity of proximity, of barakah and blessings and power, not from their individuality but because they are in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah As a result Allah bestows what He wants to bestow of His Divinely names, His Divinely lights, His Divinely blessings. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding to reach into the oceans of malakut and the oceans of reality of malakut and whatever we're trying to achieve, to achieve it in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah Why Allah gives us this immense blessing. The whole Qur'an describes when they were asking and they were challenging Prophet about last days and difficulties, they were kept trying to challenge Prophet said that, bring, bring the punishment now if what you say is true. Just like when we're talking and we're saying, these are the last days, you don't see these things as Dajjal things and you don't see these things as… <laughs>
as craziness and people say, bring it on, bring it on, let's see what kind of difficulty it is, difficulty it is. And what Allah described in Holy Qur'an that to Prophet in the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad that I would not punish them while you are amongst them. I will not punish them while you are amongst them. Means Allah is not going to bring azab on, on uh, Sayyidina Muhammad and that's the key that anybody who, who wants punishment then you know good luck in trying to find what you want. Anyone who's trying to seek Allah's satisfaction, Allah's safety, Allah's blessings then Allah is just saying, I will not punish if Sayyidina Muhammad is with you. So then how to gain that? This was the whole description. Lose yourself, become nothing, oceans of love and muhabbat. Do all the examples of hudu of muhabbat and love. Keep the hudur of these pious people, learn the way of, of annihilating and be, becoming in the oceans of fana that they take you into the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah so that that light of ourself is, is exchanged and Allah gives to us a light of Muhammadun Rasulullah as a safety and a najat and a protection upon this earth. So wherever those lights are that Allah's words are true from Holy Qur'an. Ya Rabbi with the light of Sayyidina Muhammad in us, around us, amongst us, protect us from this azab, protect us from these difficulties, protect us from this bala that uh, is opening upon the earth. Ya Rabbi protect us that only you can protect Ya Rabbi. Ya Allahu Nasran Aziza bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. Of a series of Click the link now to subscribe.